Hello everyone! How are you all today? My name is Annabel A. Gordonas and I'm very much excited to welcome you to our international training on strategies for literacy skills development. So let me share to you the learning objectives of our training. First is discuss strategies for literacy skills development. Describe the components of modern strategies and literacy skills development. Identify strategies and techniques to support literacy skills development and analyze their effectiveness. And lastly, integrate language and literacy learning throughout the environment and the curriculum. So it's my hope that you're going to have fun in this training. I hope you're going to take note as well and you may raise your questions later. Uh, or maybe um, contact the Philippine Continuing Professional Development if you have concerns about this training. So we are aware of the Sustainable Development Goals, which is actually a shared blueprint you know, by the, the members of the United Nations in 2015. This is one way to uh, really ambition uh, that by 2030, those developed and developing countries will be able to uh, alleviate poverty, have the equal access to education, promote equality among all men and women, and other relative goals that really need to, to, to promote the rights of every individual, and that's to have a better life. So, if you're going to check, quality education is part of it and it's on the fourth spot. So, this has really posed a great challenge for all of us being educators and school leaders because um, we know that it's the fundamental right of our learners no? to be able to access the quality education. And with all of the various things that are happening right now brought by the VUCA world, either volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity that we are experiencing. So it, it really created a big challenge or a big question for all of us on how do we settle ourselves you not know, to be part of this change. So our discussion today will really focus on the strategies for literacy skills development. So let us first define its meaning. Okay, first, it is much more than just reading, writing, listening, speaking, and counting skills. Because if you're going to trace really 20 years ago, you know, this are just the focus of how literacy skills are being measured in SES. But when 21st century skills emanated and then here comes the, the pressure of Industry 4.0. No? So there is an addendum of, a, of that definition which says that literacy is a means of identifying, understanding, interpreting, creating, and communicating in our digital information rich and fast changing world that's based on UNESCO. We know that our world really changed you know, from its usual landscape to that of a digital uh, digital world or fast changing world. No? So um, before COVID contagion came, we are actually innovating ourselves no, as part of the endeavor made by the, the Republic of the Philippines to also include in our system, and that's to be uh, digital natives no, when it comes to teaching or maybe employing the use of various platforms. No? When it comes to technology, how do we, we balance ourselves to really embrace this change? No? So, we become adept to it and during COVID, as a matter of fact, we attended heaps of trainings just to solidify our understanding, our commitment not to really provide quality education to our learners. Another one based on OECD in 2016, literacy is understanding, evaluating, using, and engaging with 
various resources no, to participate in society, to achieve one's goals, and to develop one's knowledge and potential. We are aware that educators nowadays are really uh, pressured no, when it comes to really nurturing learners who are having that sense of ownership. So when I am talking about ownership. It means to say that when our students graduate, they are able to uh, develop no, their sense of commitment by way of delivering their their knowledge, skills, and abilities through leadership, management, and uh, critical thinking skills and other important and relative skills that they need to uh, demonstrate in the workplace. So, why are literacy strategies important nowadays? First one is, it improves communication skills. The moment our learners, our students are able to exhibit or maybe um, get to read a text or maybe decode a certain text, no, it has a resonating effect with them, whether uh, they, it could have no. It could convey something which will eventually um, lead them to interpretation and articulate something based on what is uh, embedded in the text. So when we are able to train our students to be like that, no, in the workplace, it could never be a problem for them because uh, during their college years or in the elementary or in the high school level, they're able to really... Uh, domestify these things now they're already trained to become problem solvers of their uh, of the specific tasks that are given them okay the first or uh, the second one is provide support structures no because the way how they are trained and the way how they are developed when it comes to literacy skills like reading speaking and the like they would be able to develop their social and emotional connections toward other people because they are used to they are used to to present crisp articulation of thoughts in the classroom or even if it's online the the secret there is or the the, the big challenge there is how we are able to really discover in them the giants that they need to really demonstrate you know, whenever they are asked to participate Another one is it develops capabilities. This is basically true because when they are already employees no, in the, the companies that they're uh, connected with, you know, when they're able to write effectively, speak uh, confid confidently you know, with, with all of the, the things that are needed, well, basically, it could lead them to promotions or advancement you know, to their career growth you know? and the last one is addresses specific needs we are aware that our learners come from uh, diversities you know? and when we are able to really train them you know, to face multidisciplinary approaches when it comes to teaching when it comes to learning they're already bombarded with heaps of training which are crucial to making them effective and better or realistic learners, no? then I would say that they're ready no, when that time comes when they're settling for employment already. So how do we assess our learners nowadays when we're talking about digital technology? Because basically when we're talking about literacy skills, it's focused originally on four reading, writing, speaking, listening, and then during 21st century, uh, I mean, when this uh, educational landscape has been uh, introduced, digital literacy is offered, okay? So how do we track literacy in an increasingly digital world? First one is digital divide, okay? So UNESCO has been very active in assisting every country how to track and monitor the progress with their, their I mean, the composition of their adults and youths, no? We're able to, I mean, this people are able to promote and enhance their 
literacy skills because we know that when we're talking about digital technology, literacy and numeracy are considered to be the skills that are needed, no? leading on to making them uh, competitive. No? Uh, they could have a sense of entrepreneurship. They could be able to develop the soft and hard skills. Another one is... We, we could be able to also expand their technical and vocational skills, okay? The next one is Education 5.0. Um, this is the new thing right now, no? And when we're talking about Education 5.0, we're talking about humans. No? And then next to it are the machines. No? So here we are focusing on how we are able to develop the, the holistic nature of our learner, whether it could, it could be about mental, about social, about emotional, spiritual, in other relative dimensions to making them holistic learners. Okay. Another thing, you know, when we track literacy is on lifelong learning. Okay. Every thing that we do you know, every day is useless without when we do not consider how would our learners perform when they graduate? What are the specific skills that they are able to acquire you know, during the, the, the six-year stay that they had in our, in our school or four-year college degree that we have in our university so it's our fundamental duty to always assess and evaluate their knowledge skills and attitudes so that they could basically uh, possess no holistic learning and last one is a new generation of literacy indicators. That's why the UNESCO Institute for Statistics has been very active as well in monitoring the literacy rates of or literacy data of every country by checking if these youths and adults are able to really acquire literacy and numeracy because it boils down to the... Uh, Sustainable Development Goals, no, that by 2030, there would be a better life no, for all of us, especially for those in the developing countries. So, of course, we're talking about the, the, the development when it comes to education, equality, um, about uh, economics, about poverty, uh, and other important notable goals no that are embedded in the sdgs okay so literacy includes the following skills first is reading writing listening speaking and digital literacy so we're going to discuss this one by one and i hope that uh, at the end of this training you'll be able to really compare and contrast and interconnect you know, the, 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 the significance of each literacy in uh, from that, you'll be able to reflect and rethink where you are in terms of the production of knowledge that you that you um, reverberate in the classroom. So it's our job to really amplify everything, the way how we teach our students so that basically they could be able to acquire effective teaching and learning experiences. So first is reading. So reading refers to a reading material that is in the form of sentences or paragraphs. No? It generally involves reading notes, letters, memos, manuals, specifications, regulations, books, reports, or journals. I remember when I took my, inter my first international English language testing system uh, 10 years ago, um, I was really having a hard time taking the test because it's my first time to really experience such such kind such kind of a test where it's quite challenging and fiddly no uh, so it, it came to me a deep reflection that why is it that I did not experience this type of of reading 
uh, reading experience because when we are talking about on the level of difficulty, it's quite fiddly. No? I was really having a hard time. And as teachers, it's our job with our if you're a mathematics teacher, an Araling Pandipunan teacher, a Filipino teacher, <clears throat> an English teacher, anyone has the responsibility to to really develop the sense of reading ability of each student. Okay. So another one is writing. So writing refers to all kinds of writing from single word entries and lists to complex reports, manuals, and literature. Okay, so one of the best ways to best ways to get promoted in the job uh, is our excellence in writing. So this is, I mean, writing could be uh, in terms of text type or printed type or non-printed type like that of the computers that. Uh, we're having you know, when we when we write something into it. So, um, this is one of the skills that we need to strengthen to our learners as early as when they start to to embrace no literacy and numeracy. It's part of our job to also inculcate in them the love of writing. Okay. The next one is speaking. Speaking skills are defined as the skills which allow us to communicate effectively. They give us the ability to convey information verbally and in a way that the listener can understand. So, of course, um, we know that the number one fear or phobia among people is um, uh, the fear of speaking or public speaking. So, I would say also that this one, this was one of my problems several years ago but uh, when i tried really you not know, to train myself to become confident and be able to to really uh, do a lot of works just to strengthen the, the the confidence that i have right now so it takes um a lot of work you no know, for me to do this and i'm sure all of us are able to experience this and as teachers this has been also our primary concern no, to really um, train our students to become confident when it comes to conveying information when it comes to delivering something no, whether in public or in the class no, they will be able to, to deliver uh, a sound and smart discourse no, whether in the workplace or in other uh, group of people another one is listening so this is the ability to accurately receive and interpret messages in the communication process we know that listening is pivotal no, in a certain communication uh, process it could i mean a certain process could never be successful when one is not involved in active listening or ergo uh it could lead to chaos and conflict so it's better that we also um develop no our students to become active listeners no on the way how they they give their focus no their attention upon uh, listening when someone is speaking. You know, how do they demonstrate respect and courtesy, and so on? Okay. And the last one is digital literacy. You know? So we are about to approach Education 5.0, and this is quite vital that the soft and hard skills of our students are properly uh, guided you know, in the way how they should manifest these skills whenever they are already working in their respective companies or workplaces so when we when we talk about digital literacy it connotes on the functional skills you know, where we well when we let them do something you know, we, we give them the, the freedom and autonomy to to learn from their own understanding they can create their own concepts and they can also learn from their own mistakes no? so that eventually these these um discoveries could lead them to skills that could be demonstrated when they are working already right creativity at the end of the day we are able to train them to become designers designer of a certain program uh, they're able to to write a book because of the way how we 
train them to become writers, right? The next one is critical thinking and evaluation. So this is one of the main uh, goals that we need to also reverberate in terms of training. Our students need to, to solve a problem question. They need to really um, manifest that guided and inquiry research undertakings whenever they are given you know, a certain task you know, to do you know, in a classroom. Cultural and social understanding, they're able to respect you know, and exhibit um, the rhythm of communication within a group because we know that when they graduate, they will be um, mingling with other people. With or <laughs> They would say that they like these people or they do not like these people. Uh, so they need to really also um, developing them the way how they should respect people in their workplaces the next one is collaboration how do they collaborate when they're uh, using uh, web-based tools not in the workplace no? so it's also our fundamental duty to ex let them experience how to use web-based tools in the classroom if they are choosing the online learning modality i'm not saying that you are going to embrace everything no? uh, maybe one two or three learning platforms could do so that our students are able to really uh, inject in them you know, the, the beauty of digital literacy. The next one is the ability to find and select information. This is also one of the things that we need to let them uh, demonstrate awareness of because we know that there are heaps of resources in the internet and we know that our students have or they can have an easy access to these resources. So as educators, it's it's our duty to always guide them not to choose when to choose the good uh, types of materials that might be um, important you know, in their classroom tasks or how do they filter information that are not good, that are not relative to their um, that are that basically uh, giving them the right amount of information ergo it could lead them to uh, bad influence or bad habits no? so they can filter their own uh, preferences when it comes to using digital technology the next one is effective communication so during this time especially during COVID-19 so there are a lot of communication channels uh, web-based tools that are important so that we can possibly reach out to our students so why not also educate them not to also embrace this type of innovation and e-safety so this is one of the topics that we will be having so i hope um i'm going to discuss it uh further to our next remaining topics okay so those are the four the five skills that are literacies that we need to exemplify in the classroom with our uh, we are teaching a mathematics subjects, science, English, etc. It's better that we also cater to this uh, literacy skill so that our students will be able to um, demonstrate you know, holistically when they are in the real field you know, of working in their respective workplaces. So what is then is literacy skills development. So it involves conscious attention and focused learning. So it consists skills and knowledge that need guidance, time, and support to develop. So um, this is actually a win-win situation for both the teacher and the student, so, and as well as the parents, of course. Kailangan, um, they should create partnerships so that the welfare of the child no, could be best facilitated. No? So it's the job of the teacher no, to um, revitalize he, her or his teaching strategies, techniques, methods no, toward the literacy skills development in order to really um, arrive no, that final outcome by producing autonomous learners. So we know for a fact that the Filipino learner nowadays has been greatly affected by the pandemic. No? So, uh, sa DepEd, meron silang blended learning and then 
for the higher education institutions, we also have that flexible learning. So where do we situate ourselves as educators in really helping our students you know, to, to have the equitable and equal access to quality education? Diba? Kailangan yung combination ng Bloom's and Maslow's um, concepts are being attained. Hindi lang yung Bloom's. Kasi kung wala yung Maslow's, it's useless. No? So, there are times we check no, the, 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 the the conditions of our students and other stuff. Kasi it's our fundamental duty then to, to really know who they are. Because if they know that we are doing this, then uh, they will be motivated. And we know that based on research, motivation has um, is a great factor when it comes to to influence the, the learning ability of our learners. So here, there is a need to consider the local and global forces as to politics, social, cultural, economics, what else, and other aspects. No, strengthen lifelong learning. Learning. No, and this is not a new direction, but the pandemic accentuates or accentuates its importance and urgency. When we are passionate teachers, we know that there is really a problem. As a matter of fact, I could also relate with you when uh, during pandemic, we really spent money just to buy a new laptop, a new gadget, a printer, a camera, just to deliver quality online learning modality or if it's correspondence mode, really did our best no, just to cater uh, the best education that our students or learners deserve to acquire. No? So how do we strengthen the foundational skills, which is focused on numeracy and literacy? Uh, we know that the Department of Education has been doing its best you know, to provide this to our learners. So we are aware that both ideas or concepts are regarded as the sh threshold of foundational learning. So these remain as the focus of the teaching and learning process in the first key stage, K2, uh, K2 grade 3 of the basic education continuum. Okay? So when we are talking about the dimension for literacy success in achieving an education change, according to OECD recommendations, because they are also monitoring you know, the, 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 the condition of how literacy skills are facilitated by each country. No? So, ito yung mga coherent and actionable implementation. No? So, what has been the element implementation approach? So, when it comes to smart policy, how has the curriculum been implemented from the students' perspectives? No? So, there is a need to really check and assess the understanding of our students in terms of these factors. Another one, is the design working well for all students as they progress and transition through the systems? The next one is inclusive stakeholder engagement. We are aware that um, schools could never exist without the hand, without forging linkages with stakeholders so it's a must it's a necessity so what to what extent have stakeholders been involved in how can they engage most productively to continue delivering the best possible k-12 program oh. and then another one is conducive environment how are the policy and institutional environments contributing to k-12 program reaching schools so these are just some of the important things that we are um really checking too no we need to really check on these too so that it could have an amplification effect to our specific duty as a teacher when it comes to promoting digital or uh, this literacy skills so it means that we must sweep all learners with 21st century skills through quality accessible relevant and liberally basic education for them to be able to adjust to future changes in the labor market needs so we're doing this to be able to compete in our country you know, so that our learners will possess appropriate skills creativity and intelligence to cope with that changing 
realm that's based on the personal mantra, the personal vision and mission of our uh, the Secretary of the Department of Education. I really admire Dr. Lenore Briones. She has the, 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 the vision to see what's the clear picture of how DepEd should become in five to ten years and so and and beyond, right? So I'm sure you're aware of what 21st century skills is, right? We're talking about foundational literacies, no? So how students uh, shall apply these core skills to everyday tasks in the classroom, in the 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 way how we they deal with people and on how they're able to collaborate with their classmates online. No? So this involves literacy, numeracy, no? scientific literacy, ICT, financial, cultural, and civic literacy. So it's kind of integrated approach no? so that basically our students are able to acquire this. The next one is when it comes to competencies, how students approach complex challenges because we know that when they are in the actual um, industries no or actual work already they will be demonstrating their skills so we're talking about critical thinking problem solving they're able to really find a solution to the problem question that their employers are giving them or letting them solve no? creativity how do they introduce an innovation? How do they create something? It could, whether it could be a, a program, a promotional advertisement, it could be a uh, a book, no, or maybe a discovery about research. No, so the the, the challenge is there, there. Sa atin yon, educators, how to tickle the minds and hearts of our learners. The next one is communications. It's also vital that at an early age, they are able to really manifest, manifest the self-confidence when it comes to dealing with other people through spoken uh, skills. No? And last one is collaboration. So we are looking into uh, training them to become respectful of others' opinions. They could be able to freely um, accentuate their rhythm of communication toward others. No, they're able to respect and demonstrate courtesy in the workplace. Okay. And the next one is character quality. So how students approach their changing environment. No? So basically, importante that they are curious about it. They have, they are inquisitive about how this, how this things happen. How do these works, or how do these skills are being demonstrated or performed? They are persistent. They want to get the knowledge. They want to be competitive, right? And the next one is initiative. Um, they have the tolerance to be accepting of all the challenges that they might be facing in the future. They could be able to also exhibit and display their sense of urgency whenever uh, in the exigency of services in the workplace, of course, right? The next one is persistence and grit. No? They, they are able to, to develop in them the, the, the sense of pushing harder because they believe that excellence is a habit and they need to really not settle for any mediocrity acts. The next one is adaptability. With the VUCA world that we have right now, it's imperative that they also assess themselves and monitor their progress as regards being flexible from all of the aerobic skills that they are experiencing. No? Whether it could be re relative to their, to their personal and professional um, challenges. It could be about politics, about economics, about environment, about social and cultural dimensions, right? And another one is leadership. How can they be able to, to uh create their own vision of who they are in terms of creating or maybe performing their specific job. So we need to train them to become proactive you know, in taking a leap you know, to, to exhibit their sense of leadership you know, 
doing how they navigate themselves toward accomplishing a major tasks. And the last one is social and cultural awareness. We also need to also develop in them uh, the way how they look into the future of now. Ano yung nangyayari? Naging empathetic sila because they are aware of what's happening no, around the globe. Uh, we can also train them to, to have a heart for everyone. So these are basically the 21st century skills and lifelong learning that's that our students need, need to really exemplify. Okay? And I'm sure you are aware of what uh, the fourth industry revolution in the 21st century competencies and skills are needing, diba? So just to have a short review on this, we know that fourth industrial revolution is a trend of automation, yeah? And data exchange and manufacturing technology. So it includes cyber physical systems, the internet of things, cloud computing, and cognitive computing, no? And it also creates a smart factory based on the machine to machine connection to meet the requirements of customizing and personalizing products in the mass production. And it meets uh, the needs of individual customers, especially some manufacturing. So basically, Industry 4.0 caters about the machines. You know? And right now, we are still embracing this type of um, era. You know? So thankfully, uh, nakakasabay naman tayo and as a matter of fact, ito yung mga glorious moments that in that uh, we're able to really create our future. We will, we were visionary, you know, on how to really cope up with the digital uh, world that we are experiencing right now. So, uh, during this moment, you no, know, various countries were able to embrace ICT education policy. No? Sa atin, meron tayong Department of Education Computerization Program and Digital Rise in 2018. So, um, it has uh, created no, a massive impact to the, the, the face of educational sector. So, administrators, teachers, students, and parents alike are really collaborating each with each other just to really cater this type of challenge. So, the Department of Education has been establishing with public and private partners, kasama na din yung mga higher education institutions, sa DTI, and other uh, partners no, from international arena just to really support the best and quality education for our students. And we have also uh, acknowledged the fact that emerging jobs continue to really rise right now. Mayroon siyang skyrocketing um, presence right now, especially during COVID-19. Para mga disruptors na uh, digital technology are considered to be the new things that are being implemented right now, like artificial intelligence, you know, mga, uh, big data. They are not, they were not popular decades ago, or several years ago, but during COVID, they are being intensified. Okay, so we're talking about the jobs that are about to really emerge, like the business process analysts, data scientists, design engineer, electronic mail and chat support agent. In other important jobs that we need to revitalize and rethink of as purveyors of knowledge. Because if not, if we will not train our students to be uh, delivering or demonstrating the skills that they need to possess in order to perform these emerging jobs, then it's useless. Okay? So when we are talking about Industry 4.0, no? so Education 5.0 is also connected. So we are talking about rehumanizing education in the age of the machines. No? So we are aware that during Education 4.0, talagang nabigyan ng focus yung machines. No? 
uh, it's all about machines where we discover heaps no of uh, state of the art digital technology but uh, with education 5.0 it's human centric it's a combination but primarily focus on the humans so it starts with humans no not technology its purpose refers explicitly to the specific outcomes no that need to be achieved by humans as a result of a particular learning experience so it's not about providing a learner with a laptop or a tablet ba syempre hindi ganun no? kasi it's useless then um it is not about um improving infrastructure and connectivity it's not about developing digital tools and platforms but it is about preparing intellectually socially and emotionally strong individuals mindful of their health and personal development as a general purpose to start with okay kasi nandoon na yan eh yung mga digital technology web based learning platforms that are offered you no know, around the globe but um we are focusing on the development of a true individual who can demonstrate the skills knowledge and abilities no who can demonstrate the the soft and the hard skills that are needed no? the 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 ability to to also exemplify the affective side of the humans no so ito yung mga important dimensions or aspects so it also followed then by the appropriate uh, strategic methodological and pedagogical approaches na kailangan gawin or Uh, ibibigay para sa mga estudyante. So, the latter among others include the ways to bring motivation, creativity, and joy of learning back to learners. So, digital equipment, infrastructure, and platforms may be crucial here, of course. However, however, they are enablers, not purposes themselves. So, that's the difference of education five points. So, let's go back to the rationale. So, UNESCO believes that Educational quality access and system strengthening cannot be compromised in times of crisis like this. Okay? So it reiterates its stand in spite of the circumstances, education cannot wait. So if learning stops, we will lose human capital. And we know that the human capital is the most important uh, aspect no, during Education 5.0 vis-a-vis um, Industry 5.0. So in parallel to this belief, The DEP affirms its commitment in sustaining the delivery of the quality, no? accessible, relevant, and liberating Philippine basic education services anchored on the Sulong Edukalidad Plan. So it will continue to strive to produce holistic Filipino learners with 21st century skills. So consequently, the Bureau of Curriculum Development no, ensures that learning standards, kaya nga doon, ah, ng, uh, yung mga uh, relevant and flexible access no, to address the complex, disruptive, volatile, and ambiguous impact of COVID-19 in the Philippines, no, particularly in the basic education sector. Kaya yung uh, multiliteracies nowadays are vital no, to the development of our learners. So, kaya yung vision no, is to mine all talents and the mission is to, to really exhibit that all shall be there and no one is left behind. That's the, the main concept there. So, we are now done to the, the introduction of what literacy scale. So, right now, we'll be dealing on the first literacy and that's reading. So, we know that uh, several decades ago, So, ito yung unang uh, phase na napag-aralan din natin as a pupil. No? And can you still recall the first word that you read maybe in a book? No? Can you still um, recall your fa- first favorite book during your elementary years? So, in a developmental theory, literacy is not A single skill that simply gets better. No? It's not just uh, being acquired no? for parang bukas agad ay nandyan na siya. No? So, being literate is very different for the skilled first grader, fourth grader, high school student, and adult. No? And the effects of school experiences can be quite different at different 
points in child development. Kaya, we know naman that with all of the learning theories that we know, we can adjust to the various situations and how we could possibly train our students to become holistic individuals. No? So, we know that uh, we learn, we let them uh, explore and discover things so that they could basically um, learn and uh, develop their knowledge or maybe embrace yung complexity ng mga knowledge skills and attitudes that they need to demonstrate. So, it's our job to really know and identify their foundational literacies, yung complex skills that they have right now, and maybe lead them to advanced skills that they need to um, develop along the way. So, let me present to you the stages of reading development. I'm sure some of you are aware of this, but for those who are not, so let me present this to you. So, basically, nag-uuna yan sa stage 1, the emergent pre-reader, like between 6 months to 6 years old, and then the novice reader, typically between 6 to 7 years old, and then meron tayong the decoding reader, the fluent comprehending reader, and the expert reader. So, Unahin natin yung stage 1, the emergent pre-reader, uh, typically between 6 months to 6 years old. So, during the initial phase of the reading development process, children sample and learn from a full range of multiple sounds, words, connects, images, stories, prints, exposures, um, literacy materials, and the like. So, according to the father of linguistics and that's um, Noam Chomsky, uh, we do have a block box that is within our system that basically every child has the potential to learn a language. No? So it could be ranging from different activities provided by the parents, by the teachers, and etc. Our learners, we know that, learn uh, from different uh, places, locations, etc. So we need not put a pressure in them because that's our mission and for a day they need to really read something no uh, for the most part we need to all establish in them first the motivation that they need to have the next one is the novice reader you know typically between six to seven years old so during the second phase of the reading development process, children are learning the relationship between letters and sounds and among printed and spoken words. So here they're able to, to uh, do the, the or love you know, to, to read stories with high frequency words and phonically regular words and uses emerging skills and insights to sound out new syllable words. So it's our fundamental then uh, duty to assist and guide them you no know, to maybe um, let them identify you know, the, the, the right ways of saying or pronouncing the word based on the reading activity that they have but not really at all times that we are really correcting them because they are still starting to really love you know, the, the, the process stage three is the, the decoding reader typically between seven to nine years old so during the third phase of this reading development the, uh, the process or uh, process children are be uh, beginning to read familiar stories and text with increasing fluency. So, dito na, they are able to really um, improve the foundational decoding elements like side vocabulary and meaning in the reading of the stories and selections. Sometimes, they are basically sharing their own ideas about it. Or sometimes, they were they will they are able to pose questions to the teachers uh masaya no masaya pag mga ganitong edad yung mga estudyante natin ng pupils stage 4 the fluent comprehending reader which is typically uh, typically between 9 to 15 years old so during the fourth phase of the reading development process uh, reading is used to acquire new ideas to gain knowledge not to experience new feelings to acquire new attitudes and to explore issues from multiple perspectives so reading includes the study of textbooks reference works trade books newspapers and magazines that contain new ideas and values new vocabulary and syntax so from this one parang meron silang sense of curiosity no, to, to really look into new things uh, welcoming na sa kanila yung mga new references no? um and dito tayo papasok din as teachers and how to really um imbibe yung yung culture ng 
uh, being curious yung pagiging matanong nila or how do they um, demonstrate yung yung pagbabasa yung love for reading no sa klase how do they participate in the classroom no and ito yung uh, stage 5 no uh, the expert reader which is typically from 16 years and older so during the fifth phase of the reading development process here the learner is reading from a wide range of advanced materials so both expository and narrative no with multiple viewpoints so learners are reading broadly across the disciplines like including the physical no biological and social sciences as well as the humanities, politics, and current affairs. So here, parang na-diversify na yung talent nila and creativity. They're able to also strengthen yung multidisciplinary approaches of um, looking for valuable resources para sa improvement and development nila. Um, nagkakaroon na sila ng integrative approaches how to be um, um intellectually capacitated sa mga questions na meron sila. So, wala tayong magagawa kundi suportahan natin yung mga na ganito yung uh, culture. No? It, talagang nai-inspire tayo na pag ganito yung um, na, na-de-demonstrate nila sa klase natin. Right? So, let me present to you some reading comprehension strategies. Although, I'm, I'm sure na alam nyo na yung uh, iba dito, but just to maybe review, uh, revisit no, and maybe check if how how vital these are or effective pa ba or mas magagamit mo pa yung mga reading comprehension strategies. So, meron tayong tinatawag na reciprocal reading. So, it's reciprocal because you gradually give away more and more teacher control. Although, I'm not saying na um, hindi rin pwedeng palaging teacher na lang kasi wakad na question din yung pedagogical and content expertise ng teacher. No? Tayo yun. No? Kaya kailangan pa rin ng mga learners ng guidance natin, facilitation, love, commitment, passion, etc. However, we are, we are also um, looking into producing uh, leaders, yung mga uh, pupils who can be able to really solve problems and take ownership of their own learning, no? They can also collaborate with others, no? When they, whenever they do that reading activity, like meron tayong pair, work reading, or collaborative reading, or any other activities na pwedeng ma-demonstrate ng mga estudyante natin, right? So, the instructional concepts which underpin, no? It include expert modeling, expert support that the child begins a task, children supporting each other in gradual Reduction of support as pupils develop competence. So naturally, it, it also starts from us. Now, whenever we let them do a specific task, syempre, pivotal pa rin yung modeling na ginawa, yung ginagawa ng teacher. Pero along the way, dapat meron tayong sense of um, separation and observation. If they're really improving their the competencies that they need to acquire, no? and basta wag natin uh, iwala yung yung ano din natin mission na talagang for them to to acquire this specific competency for a day's lesson okay especially sa reading no then pupils are encouraged to monitor their own reading abilities because uh, you are there no? you're able to provide them the the concepts of identifying ano yung strengths nila ano yung weaknesses so na mo monitor pero you should be very careful when it comes to feedback and evaluation pupils are supported to develop reading strategies before during and after reading but it's interconnected it's inseparable dapat nandoon ang teacher from the onset until end para ingress and egress no uh, nandoon tayo umaalalay sa mga estudyante natin especially sa elementary lalo na sa kinder tsaka sa mga K to three because crucial yung development foundational frameworks nila when it comes to the love for reading. So research shows that proficient and confident readers employ a number of strategies to achieve comprehension of text. So once decoding fluency and automaticity, the ability to do things without occupying the mind, usually achieved through learning repetition and practice so have been addressed young people 
need to be taught to arrange our strategies for comprehension. Ita ito sa mga problems natin sa sa Philippines. No, may mga um, PISA result na nakaka for me it's heartbreaking kasi nasa low proficiency yung mga estudyante natin. No? So it boomerangs to the teachers partly. No, hindi naman lahat. No? Uh, kasi tayo yung ano eh yung uh, purveyors of knowledge na bibigay ng uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities. It, bakit ganito yung result? So, it challenged us big time how to, to really mitigate the problem. So, para mas ma-improve pa yung reading comprehension ng mga estudyante natin, we also need to, to um, let them experience these strategies. Una, ito yung predicting when it comes to reading. So, pupils preview the text, no? to anticipate what may happen next. So, pup pupils can use information from a text, accommodate it within their prior knowledge, and use it to make logical predictions before and during reading. So, parang, um, we know naman that with uh, a reading material, no, nagiging, ano sila, um, nagiging creative yung mga estudyante natin because of the materials that we're using. Like, uh, pag nagbabasa sila, may mga pictures, may mga charts, may mga tables. So, from that, they are able to already um, exemplify and amplify their uh, curiosity. They would be asking questions. They would be able to really um, share what might happen with this type of text, ano yung approach na gagawin nila when it comes to giving their advanced perspective about the text. So, that's a great um, creative stuff that we might be, or we might uh, let them develop along the reading process. The next one is questioning. So, um, being curious and inquisitive should be also uh, encouraged in the classroom when tayo magalit if our students are always questioning about a thing or something. It's, it means to say that they're really engaged in the class. No? So, basta related sa, sa class yung tanong, syempre. So, formulating questions can be a difficult and complex task. However, when pupils are told prior to reading, so, meron silang awareness and purpose to really put their con concentration and focus to that. You know? So, during reciprocal reading, pupils are asked to generate questions. So, the questions could range from you know, five W's and one H. You know? mga inquiries na ganon, especially sa elementary. And then, moving on to a more complex way of questioning, like anchoring it to the Bloom's taxonomy of learning. Next one is identifying or clarifying. So, it means to say that um, you let your students so, a particular question or maybe yung mga gray areas na meron sila uh, would be clearly identified and assessed. No? So, here, identifying encourages pupils to monitor their own comprehension as they encounter barriers to comprehension, especially in vocabulary. And tayo naman pag-reading, di ba? Talagang meron mga unlocking of difficulties. We, we first explain yung mga words which are unfamiliar sa mga estudyante natin. And that's a great uh, strategy. It might be traditional, but still it's working. It's still um, it's still useful no, and valuable on sa understanding ng mga estudyante natin upon reading. So, teachers model with pupils no, how to figure out a difficult word, like read, look for parts of the word, no, they know, read on, look for context clues, and other stuff. And mas maganda rin na if they are trained to be able to really collaborate with their peers, their classmates, to ask questions, to share something. Uh, Nire-respeto nila yung uh, ideas ng isang classmate. So that's better na uh, every day, no? we let them do that. No? Kasi we know naman na ngayon ay rampan din ng bullying right in the classroom. Teachers and peers can also model dictionary, map reading, encyclopedia, and IT skills. No? And then the next one is summarizing. So, um, this connotes a process no, when it comes to really developing our students to do this. So, when it comes to summarizing, dapat um, may connection do yun sa introduction and body na nabasa nila doon sa text. No? And be sure to really select the main points that need 
to be summarized at the end of the, the discussion or lesson. So when summarizing, we let them look for or an urgency, no? Ana kailangan i-consider kung ano yung content na dapat ma-exemplify, ano yung mga transitional transitional devices na kailangan, ano yung mga points na dapat ma-establish no in summarizing that, the idea of what's being read, okay? And then visualization. We know that um our students are really motivated when they are provided with colorful material, materials, mga resources na talagang bago sa kanila. So, it's also our job to make an effort no, on how our resources are demonstrated and uh, presented to them para yung motivation, yung lasting effect that they need to have no, during the actual demonstration is there. Yung student engagement that you would like to really get, no, catch, sa first five minutes pa lang ay nandoon na so we can go visuals let's try to be creative how to uh, manifest and demonstrate this one in the classroom so let me share to you some strategies for reading literacy na pwede nating magamit pa uh, first is children's book week activities so ikaw kung ikaw ay principal or ikaw yung head ng uh, English no so I'm no one among the Philippines we are doing this one so we can innovate no, on this by considering other yung mga kung ano yung trend ngayon na pwedeng uh, i-adapt na be sure lamang na yung mga estudyante ay alam nila kung ano yung uh, mga conventions na dapat na meron doon sa week activities na yon no? um, let's try to also let them be part of the undertaking by asking questions about what the plans or programs na pwedeng lang may suggest so that calls for uh the the, the motivation no? and the eagerness for them to really be part of the project the next one is reading strategy so there are heaps a lot no? there are heaps of reading strategies and the ball is in our hands as teachers how to really look for appropriate and suitable material whenever we we discuss something in a gems lesson so um, siyempre, pag nasa modular tayo, dapat um, be sure na equitable din yung mga resources that we are sharing no, to our students para mas ma-appreciate ma, ma, pa nila yung learning lesson. Okay? The next one is teaching the analytic method of um, phonics. No? So, phonics is one of my favorite topics. Alam nang natin na doon tayo ay um, nag-i-enjoy, na we are able to stimulate our thoughts whenever we exercise yung sounds, yung phonemes, phonological awareness sa klase. So, why not uh, also exhibit nung analytical method na where students are really ask no to demonstrate something critically in the class or let them experience no their freedom of expression whenever they uh, pronounce something they say something and, and other stuff the next one is book activities uh, in other schools they are doing this like in mga book the nation drive book um presentation of mga new pub newly published books no so this is also some the next one is help parents raise readers. So, um, it's also the, 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 the job of the teacher to also connect with the parents. Uh, how could they, they be able to also establish the connection na uh, yung reading skill ng bata ay mas mabridge pa when the, the, the child is at home. So, we might uh, encourage the the parents na i-open yung mga asynchronous lessons or try to also have a follow-up discussion no? uh, hindi man lahat kasi minsan may mga reklamo din yung parents and that's true so I mean what I'm trying to say here is i-develop natin yung sense of cordial relationships with them para kung mga strengths and weaknesses na dapat ay ma-share natin regarding their child so hindi tayo mahihirapan right and read aloud so yung modeling the way how we let them read could be a, a mechanism para mas mama improve, ma diversify pa yung reading skill ng mga estudyante natin. Uh, mas maganda rin kung may peer-based evaluation and assessment para makita nila ano yung mga strengths ng mga estudyante natin. 
So we are through with reading literacy skills. I hope um uh, na na internalize niyo yung mga possible tips and techniques how to to balance things out when it comes to reading literacy of your learners. The next one is writing literacy. You know? um, this is quite challenging then, no? Kasi I remember yung first cursive writing na first cursive writing experience ko ay terrible talaga, no? Yung hirap mag, ano, mag cursive ano na ng letter S. I don't know. <laughs> Pero later on, naging favorite ko na siya, no? So, writing is the ability to compose text effectively for various purposes and audiences. It is a tool for communication and learning that allows no, us to document, collect, and widely circulate detailed information. It also provides a means of ex expressing oneself and persuading others, and it's a method of communication and expression. So, workplace, it's also vital that we are... Um, effective when it comes to writing. Di ba? Pag nasa trabaho na yung mga estudyante natin, uh, tinitest yung writing abilities nila. No? Uh, the way how they make a memo, they, they write something, an article, article, sorry, an article or a journal uh, entry to a certain publishing company, an editorial in a newspaper, or it could be about internal or external communication. So, this is our fundamental duty then, no, to trace, monitor, and assess, and do some feedback evaluation as to way how, <clears throat> as, as to the, the different ways how they respond to writing uh, activities in the classroom. So what do good writers do? Of course, they create um, impact and their trajectory to our, <clears throat> to our way of conveying a message para maging... <clears throat> clear yung message, lalo na sa, sa trabaho, di ba? We, we are asked to write something. We are asked to write a memo, a letter, etc. So, ano yung mga convention? So, naturally, alam natin yung concept ng case, like keep it short and simple. Yung ABC, like uh, we need to be accurate, no? observe brevity and be concise when it comes to writing. We know kung ano yung mga types of uh, readers natin, like sa pagsusulat, meron tayong tatlong uri ng uh, readers like uh, meron tayong high-tech readers, no? Na yung, ito yung mga taong mas mataas yung pinag-aralan, ito yung mga supervisors, mga boss natin. And then meron tayong uh, uh, low-tech, yung we do have the same level as this type of readers and lay readers. Ito yung medyo mas mataas yung pinag-aralan natin kaya from these types of audience we, we adjust uh, especially when it comes to the jargons or the selection of words and choice of um, sentences con or sentence construction so we adhere to the, the careful presentation of ideas no? kasi the, 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 we are writing not because we want to to put or to give challenges no, to our readers but we are writing because we want them to 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 convey the message that we would like to 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 share tapos meron silang action na gagawin based on the communication that we are uh, sharing them so ito yung importance of writing skills so meron tayong it is used for any type of communication such as personal and official communication it helps to develop and compose any type of writing documents or contents it also helps in bringing clarity and creativity in our writing so pag na-imbibe din natin yung writing skills ng mga estudyante they become proofreaders and editors na rin eh no? maraming conventions when it comes to writing kailangan matrain natin din sila na sa content, magaling din, no? Ano yung mga initial things to do when writing a draft and how to revise, uh, when to employ capitalization, uh, what else? Um, um, sa proofreading, ano yung mga formats na dapat mong i-consider sa editing and other stuff, no? So, these are the evidence-based writing strategies and techniques in literacy development. So, what do you have one? The, the first is writing strategies. So, naturally, marami tayong 
pwedeng i-share sa mga estudyante natin. Lalo na ngayong online, maraming web-based tools. Pero be careful din, lalo na sa mga estudyante who do not have access to uh, writing web-based tools. No? So, doon may needs assessment tayong ginagawa before we will do this. Tayo naman ay flexible no? how to really adjust yung specific topic for a day. So, writing strategies kasi, minsan ako, I, I usually uh, use analogy, like uh, sa paggamit ng uh, symbols, or it could be a clock or something. Kasi in writing, you need not write everything. Sabi nga, less is more. So, we need to train our students to be concise in writing, to be accurate, kung ano lang yung hinihingi, no? to be to, to, to write in simpler manner, plain language. They do not need to write high highfalutin words para ma-impress ang readers because that's not the the definition of writing basically right and then summarizing texts collaborative writing kasi teachers din dapat na na, na train din natin sila na to also share their output or maybe collab do some collab collab activities like um pwedeng pair work yung trabaho no at para mas ma-share nila yung knowledge nila and na-experience nila yung sense of acceptance sa mga ideas nila. Yung goals, yung broad processing of the way how your students are able to use the plain language. No? Uh, for example, di ba, as we all know naman sa writing, yung sa writing style, yung uh, excessive writing style is not allowed. No? Yung parang, please, kindly, yung too much courtesy. No? And yung legally style, like we do hereby, uh, and other types of, except if you're from Supreme Court or Philippine National Police, where you need to use legalese style language kasi kailangan sa investigative reports, then it should be there. No? The next one is sentence combining. So it tells a lot of grammar and knowledge then when it comes to writing. No? Process writing, inquiry. We also have pre-writing. So, from that, uh, we let them do this. Yung prior nila, knowledge nila, no? Ay na-exhibit na, na, na din and na, na establish yung connections nila from uh, the, the, the previous knowledge that they have to that of the present undertaking that they're having. Modeling. So, naturally, nag-uumpisa din sa ating mga teachers paano ma-motivate yung mga estudyante natin when it comes to writing. So, it's also important that we provide sample material for them to to model on and uh, uh, exemplify yung guidance na meron tayo and kailangan kasi talaga yung facilitation yung guidance ni teacher para mas ma-appreciate nila na merong taong uh, nag-guide no? merong nag-appreciate ng mga words nila use a combination of effective practices tayo naman ay can identify kung effective na or not effective na yung mga practices or strategies na pwede natin gawin, right? Sa writing. Provide time. I remember when I took IELTS uh, in order to study abroad, isa yung writing sa uh, test. No? So, my time management yon. So, I remember it's one hour ba? Or eight, 40 minutes lang. So, kailangan yung speed and accuracy when it comes to writing is also trained. No? They're also trained for that para alam nila na ito ay kailangan din, lalo na when they are taking tests, uh, when they are doing something sa trabaho, na kailangan din to beat deadlines and promote self-regulation. They would be able to facilitate their own understanding, na-check nila yung mga mali nila, dapat yung feedback and evaluation nandun palagi so that they can appreciate their, their learning experiences along the way. So those are some of the evidence-based writing strategies and techniques in literacy development. So meron tayong mga winning strategies din para mas ma-enhance pa. So number one, meron tayong learn to write good sentences, no? Try to add more flavors to writing, such as engaging words instead of bland phrases. Uh, we also, depending kasi sa type of material that our students are writing, no? So, 
sometimes we we we, we uh, encourage them to be more conversational depende yan lalo na pag ano um, creative writing yung subject and this use the paragraph style of writing because writing whole content in a paragraph bores the reader no the transition or the shift from one paragraph to another or one from line to another must be a smooth ride so that a connection is made in between the lines and learn the voices or speech for effective writing Yes. And then another one is use proper punctuation, correct spellings, and develop vocabulary. And then, syempre, avoid natin yung jargon, yung slang, fancy words, and abbreviations. Kasi it will create ambiguities doon sa nagbabasa. Kailangan yun yung sinasabi ko yung i-adapt natin the way kung anong merong audience tayo. Kanina na na-mention ko, meron tayong, tayong high-tech peers, low-tech peers, latex peers na kailangan ay ibabalo. So, dapat ay uh, we, we are able to train our students to be mindful of this. Okay? Apply a structured process like how do they plan, draft, edit, and format. Find out the audience for the article and try to engage the audience by using simple, clear, empathy words. Never lose the essence of your assertion and try to get familiar with the le- relevant software and platforms. So, ito kasi ang talagang um, kailangan sa ngayon that we we train our students to also welcome yung yung presence ng digital technology, lalo na sa writing. Kasi yun yung mga innovations that they need to be trained of. Kasi pag nag-work na sila, these equipments are there doon sa workplace nila at para hindi sila mako-culture shock. Okay? So, we are done with writing. So, ngayon naman, we are uh, on the speaking literacy. So, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng uh, speaking skills? So, the ability to speaking confidently and fluently is something which children will develop their time at school in something that will help uh, them throughout their life. I remember when I was in high school, I was in first year high school, my mother would always give me tattered materials, mga obsolete newspapers, and I would read it aloud in front of the mirror. No? Walang nagtitrain sa akin na coach. And from that, doon ko na siya, doon ko na appreciate yung English, yung the way how I um, communicate with other people na na-establish ko yung konti lang naman na confidence di pa ako masyadong confident na tayo pero when I read it aloud it, it is um, it is trajectory no, to who I am right now no? nandito ako as your trainer so basically um, through education and experience like uh, yun nga pagbabasa it really helped me a lot no? so this could be some of the technique na pwede natin i-share na yung mga sarili nating uh, style ay pwede pa lang ay ano pala siya uh, may magandang repercussion so sa future so i'm sure you have also your own experience na to really develop in you or within you your your confidence in speaking right so ito yung four elements of speaking skills according to Tizol the first one is the vocabulary uh, grammar for pronunciation and fluency so dapat Uh, the first one is vocabulary. So, paano naintindihan ng estudyante yung isang concept, yung isang word. So, uh, dapat na-train natin sila sa klase. No? So, I know, I sh- I'm sure naman that you are really mm, demonstrating this one in your own respective lessons. Yung grammar, no? that although it's not perfect kasi English naman talaga, hindi yan yung first language natin, but we are trying our best to really Um, develop in them yung sense of uh, yung tenses of verbs na pwedeng gamitin when speaking they know how to re- correct themselves when they know that something is wrong with the way how they present their ideas no? in pronunciation which is vital because sometimes they will be misunderstood if they are able to pre- mispronounce a thing or they would get bullied pero yun nga we need to also train them not to humiliate the person because Uh, the way how he or she pronounces a word. It's also vital that we train them to become um, good people. No? The last one is fluency. The ability to internalize words or the ability to really pronounce 
properly. So, ito yung mga apat na elements that really need to um, let them understand and um, demonstrate no? as part of skills in speaking. So, winning speaking strategies for literacy skills development. The first one is learn new vocabulary and phrases. Ensure they understand how English flows. Focus on pronunciation and get them to practice self talk no? So, maganda pag nasa klase. Kaya lang, syempre, pag nasa online ngayon, medyo may limited time. No? And minsan, uh, because of time management, hindi lahat ay nabibigyan ng opportunities. That's why we resort to some activities na collaborative or group work na para lahat sila ay they're given the chance to also explore and discover their speaking prowess. No? It matters that we also check all of them, not just that we focus on some four or six active students sa klase. Kailangan meron tayong fair share when it comes to delivering the, the quality education in the classroom. So, how do we develop speaking skills? So, una, uh, we model language by saying aloud and writing the ideas and concepts you, we are teaching, okay? We model what a fluent reader sounds like through focus read alouds. Uh, we, we are explicit, no? We tell students about what they are learning about each day. Kasi pag sinasabi natin or we let them encourage to do that, na, na motivate sila, no? Uh, nabibigyan sila ng chance to to share something new no? na relative doon sa experience sila for a day. No? Make expectations clear for behavior, written assignments, independent practice, and group work. No? Have students retell stories aloud. So, this is also one way to to um, create in them yung rhythm of confidence nila na ma ma, ma magnify pa doon sa klase because teachers or we are doing this for them. No? We also teach choral speaking and reading. Sing or read songs. Readers theater script. Sorry for that. Error lang. And experiment with speaking and writing. In different tenses and using different types of expressive language. Explain by showing, not just telling, and con correct content and not grammar. So, ito yung mga different things that we need to really um, develop in them. Okay? And the next one is the liter listening literacy. The most basic of all human needs is the need to understand and be understood. So, the best way to understand people is listen to them. Isa ito sa pinaka-importanteng uh, literacy na dapat ay ma-improve ng mga estudyante natin. No? They need to uh, demonstrate yung respeto when they are talking to someone. They need to be, they need to really um, be trained na dapat ay um, alam nila na active listening is vital in communication. So, students are really doing their best naman sa klase and from that as teachers tayo din ay na-train natin sila no, to really embrace this type of skill so according to the Larry L. Baker reports and listening behaviors that 70 to 75 percent of a person's working day is spent in the communication which is 30 percent talking 9 percent is writing 16 percent is reading and 45% is listening, okay? So, from this, uh, it's imperative that we also um, we also check on this type of um, report para mas alam natin kung paano natin strategize yung lessons on how our students develop their digital literacies. Okay? So, listening is the ability to accurately receive no? and interpret messages in the communication process. Nagiging effective yung communication because both the, send, uh, the speaker and the listener are really uh, doing no, their, their role no, during the communication process. Without the ability to listen effectively, messages are easily misunderstood. As a result, 
communication breaks down and the sender of the message can easily become frustrated or imitated. So let me present to you some of the active listening skills. So we have here some active listening skills like um, Firstly, we are aware that uh, it's ask open-ended questions. No? So here, uh, we let our students uh, explore and respond to the questions that we're letting them, letting them analyze or maybe share something to, 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 sh to, our, to the class. And from that, we, we evaluate how the message is clearly established whether it's correct or not no so it's it's um, a necessity that teachers should process the way how our students are answering the questions request clarification no? we should be open to this no? we also train them to become authentic no uh, summarize kung ano yung mga points na dapat ay uh, Ma learn or ma, ma makuha nila for a certain tasks. Uh, paraphrase, reflect feelings, be attuned to feelings, and ask probing questions. Kasi pag nagiging involved sila doon, we could basically say na ay uh, or students are trained for that. Um, nagbibigay sila ng respeto when someone is speaking and they're waiting for the right time to be able to share theirs as well. So, that's a better way para matuto sila and eventually pag nasa workplace na ay um, we're able to, to establish the legacy that we would like them to be in the future. So, ito yung mga teaching strategies to improve listening skills no, for our students. The first one is focus on teaching the skill of listening. So, ito rin ay mahirap nung ako'y nag-take ng IELTS. Um, yung listening test is composed of 40 minutes and Australian accent pa yung time na yun. So, basically, at the first exam, I failed kasi first time kong maka-experience ever ng listening test. Kaya parang partly na-blame ko yung mga teacher ko. Sorry. Hindi ko siya na-experience when I was in elementary, high school, or even in college. So, sana lang, um, bigyan natin ng opportunity yung mga estudyante natin to experience this in the class. Marami na nga yung resources via the internet na pwede natin uh, explore. Kahit yung DepEd, marami silang binibigay ng mga materials na pwede natin uh, gamitin. Eh? And then, model good listening habits. No? Uh, we tend to also train them to uh, demonstrate empathy whenever someone speaks. No? Uh, they could share their information when the person is done already giving the idea. No? And then use reflective listening uh, the students or we let them reflect on the way how we present something or if it is it an idea or whatever. Uh, we give our students a voice no, to, to air their side or maybe um, ask a question based on the, the recent listening activity na ginawa nyo, no? And get everyone's voice in the room. Hindi yung parang yung four, five, six lang na palaging nagpa-participate ang binibigyan natin ng oras. Dapat lahat ay may chance para mag-voice out doon sa klase. No? Talk less. Use cold calling. So again, uh, this is very effective para uh, may element of surprise so we can uh, do the yung parang sa magbibigay tayo ng mga wheel kunyari na activity or it could be do by yung drawn by lot no? depende para mas may mas surprise sila and alam nila na may chance na tatawagin sila right listen and learn from students about their behavior and listen to parents okay so we are done with listening skill so sa ngayon naman ay pag-uusapan natin yung digital literacy. So, digital li literacy is part of media literacy. So, they're both included in the idea of information literacy, which is the ability to effectively find, identify, evaluate, and use information. Lahat ngayon ay available online. Lahat ng knowledge and information na gusto natin in just one click nandun na lahat. So, 
how can we assist our students to become responsible and aware of their own actions when to select the good, the bad, and the ugly resources that they can access via the internet. No? So digital literacy specifically applies to media from the internet, smartphones, video games, and other non-traditional sources. So here are some key digital literacy uh, literacy skills kids can learn at home and at school. No, so searching effectively, lalo na sa mga elementary students. So dapat or yeah, no, dapat nagaguide natin si lala, kahit yung mga parents no na talagang they need to be restricted themselves no yung parang ano yung mga dapat lang na pwede nilang i-search no uh, this could be done through education and training doon sa part ng teachers sa parents and etc no they should uh, let them protect their and others private information online kasi uso ngayon yung identity theft yung academic theft no na pwedeng anyone can grab the opportunity to to make uh, evil no Another one is understanding digital footprints na meron sila doon sa cyber web, no? Maraming mga culprits ngayon, so kailangan ma-educate natin sila gradually how to respond to um, bad things online, okay? And respecting each other's ideas and opinions. Kasi alam naman natin yung mga bata, no? Exposed talaga sila sa mga comments na meron sa social media and dapat uh, merong specific time frame din or na-educate natin sila to really be responsible no, when it comes to digital literacy. Kaya may tinatawag tayong netiquette or network etiquette. That is the etiquette of cyberspace. No? So etiquette means the forms required by good breeding or prescribed by authority to be required in social or uh, official life. No? So dito, um nag, when when every school is doing this no mas magandang at, at the onset of the class first day of the class may ganitong part ng orientation no kasi na-educate nagagaya yung mga estudyante natin no so ano ba yung netiquette so it consists of guidelines si mga Jones and Jones when responding to digital world no Culture-based siya kasi pag ito ay na-implement sa klase, sa school, syempre magiging uh, kultura na yung mga estudyante natin. And thus, uh, they could be demonstrating a sense of awareness. No? It's malleable, it depends, it is adjustable or flexible, it is anchored on respect. Kasi pag alam natin na yung mga estudyante natin ay respectful, so meron silang... Uh, ano um meron silang action not really uh do no uh, mga evil things no sa lalo na sa cyberspace so ito yung aspects of netiquette in online learning so meron tayong online communication and interaction so ito yung uh, we are using the the FB Messenger di ba um para mas makater pa natin or relevant yung ginamit nating uh, offline uh, platform. So, maganda yung nami-message din natin sila responsibly. My internet privacy, yung digital footprint, ano yung image that we are exemplifying sa mga estudyante natin, no? And then, uh, may social media, technology tools, had hardware and software, uh, credits to original ideas and materials, copyright. Ito rin ay very pivotal, the way how we train them to, to always not uh, embrace pl plagiarism no? lalo na pag meron kang turn tin checker no po, talagang you will really uh, discover if who are your honest students kaya kailangan ay meron tayong ganitong um, platform or framework na gagamitin no, sa, sa klase natin and lastly is digital citizenship and civility kasi alam naman natin na uh, maraming opportunities ang cyberspace no it could be about good could be about bad so dapat na, na train natin sila at maging ready kung ano yung mga how to respond to negative things negative offers and the likes yung mga bullying ding mga harassment online uh, ay dapat alam din nila para they know how to respect others people's feelings 
So digital empathy means the ability to be aware of, be sensitive to, and be supportive of one's own and others' feelings, needs, and so on. That's based on Bylon 2020. So digital empathy is an ingredient to strengthen digital intelligence quotient. So ano bang ba ibig sabihin ng digital intelligence quotient? So ito yung ability na uh, they are responsible enough no, to, to really respond to the cyberspace, the social media, na um, they can control their thing, their emotions, uh, pinifilter nila kung ano yung nakikita nila. They can ask their teachers and parents as to where uh, this material is good or not, or nababalance nila, may set of equilibrium na yung mga estudyante natin because meron na silang intellectual or digital empathy. Alam naman natin that our students are prone to using my wall, my right. Tama? So, uh, we need to really establish in them yung sense of ownership na meron sila sa cyberspace. Kaya, meron tayong pinatawag na DQ citizenship. So, ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito? So, digital citizen identity, which is the ability to build and manage a healthy identity online and offline with integrity. We have seen that some of the students are cursing, no? They can easily badmouth a classmate. So, ito isa ito sa mga importanteng skill na dapat ay, or attribute na dapat din nilang pagkaingatan. I have seen a professor or a teacher was bullied by his classes in the group chat it's terrible i hope it will not happen to all of us na dapat ay na-train pa rin natin yung mga bata when it comes to attitude skills and abilities properly and appropriately yung screen time management ability to manage one screen time yung multitasking yung engagement nila online no cyber bullying which is rampant nowadays no so from that they are, uh, they are able to uh, detect cyber bullying situations and handle them wisely and then another one is cybersecurity management where they are trained to be uh, to protect one's data by creating strong passwords and to manage various cyber attacks privacy management no so meron silang ability to handle with discretion or all personal information shared online to protect one's and others privacy critical thinking no the ability to distinguish between and false info good and harmful content no and trustworthy and questionable contracts online. So, nasa atin yun as teachers din. No? At sa mga parents na dapat ay na-educate yung mga estudyante natin, mga anak natin, to become digital conscient no? citizens. No? Another one is digital footprints. It is the ability to understand the nature of digital footprints and their real-life consequences and to manage them responsibly. And the last one is digital empathy. The ability to be empathetic towards one's own and others' needs and feelings online. Kasi kahit naman ngayon ay uh, we are more on technology, dapat nandun pa rin yung pagiging makatao, makajos, no? na ini-exhibit natin sa mga attributes ng mga estudyante natin. Because a student with a high DQ is future ready. Pero yun nga, because we are embracing technology, I have here a question. Technology, does technology cause mental illness? What do you think is the answer, my dear teachers? We should remember that 61% of the people have left or have felt jealous, depressed, sad, or annoyed after checking updates of their social media accounts. So, nakikita natin yung classmates natin, may bagong bahay, car, etc. Sometimes, uh, may mga ganong feelings or emotions kasi tao lang naman tayo. Pero, dapat natitrain din natin yung sarili natin not to be jealous of material things. No? Siguro, pagigyan na lang natin yung pagtatrabaho natin and eventually, kung may gusto tayong bilhin, pwede naman siguro, no? Eventually. Or, ito din ay naisishare natin sa mga estudyante natin, no? Three out of five people spend more free time on their computer than they do with their significant other and Sometimes I'm guilty of this kasi nga may mga trabaho din tayong ginagawa, lalo na ngayon, uso yung work from home, right? And 73% of people believe their use of electronic devices has contributed stress in their life. And that's true kasi talagang uh, nagkakaroon ng radiation sa mata natin, may mga effects and other stuff. So, anxiety and depression are a thief because it instills your time, health, intimacy, energy, 
and fun. So how do we, we embrace the next normal, my dear teachers? Primarily, I've been telling you this several times that it's also our duty to really um, develop no, yung capacities and potential of our students. Yung basic literacies nila, yung 21st century skills na meron dapat sila, like yung competencies, yung hard and soft skills, and other stuff. No? So, um, we are ready actually. We are ready and we're doing this for our learners. Kaya lang, dapat din, we should always remember that as teachers, we should also take care of ourselves. No? Um, we should also inject the, 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 the careful uh, or the extra careful um, provision of how we, we deal with our mental health. No? Tsaka yung different aspects din natin, yung mental, emotional, what else, spiritual, uh, yung, yung social connections natin sa family, colleagues, students, dapat na-achieve natin yung balance, yung work-life balance para maging successful yung transition natin, going to the next normal, okay? So, sabi nga ni Aristotle, although we are always aiming for... Uh, uh, excellence and quality, we are what we repeatedly do. No? Excellence, therefore, is not an act but a habit. So, my dear teachers and school leaders, it's still our job to always embrace excellence because we should never settle for mediocrity. Okay? So, let us be uh, the agents of hope that our country needs right now no? so that around the globe we, we can be part of the change that uh, the world is needing right now so um may god bless us all so i would like to thank you for being part of this training on strategies for literacy, literacy skills development if you have some questions um, please try to email me on the screen monitor that is uh, written right now so thank you so much for listening and i hope uh, i could see you in the future for some face-to-face -face training who knows what will happen okay so goodbye everyone Mabuhay.